Hi guys, it's the, the Sports Coffee um, podcast. Thank you to our constant support from InsureWise, um, the business, business and commercial insurers. Uh, today we have a current international uh, women's player, uh, plays for Rangers and Northern Ireland, is um, Demi Vance. Demi, how are you? I'm good, thanks, how are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. Thank you for um, giving up a little bit of time to come and have a chat with us. Um, so let's start from the beginning. How did how did you get into playing playing football? Um, I started kicking ball just whenever I was younger, just kind of out in the street, um, just joining them with all the boys. And I just started in primary school. And I came across a guy who knew of the girls football team starting up. Um, I think I might have been seven. Um, and I just went down and played and just from there it kind of kicked off for me I think I joined a boys football team at the age of 11 um, 10 or 11 and I played right through with boys and on the girls team so I played for two until I was 16 um, and then unfortunately after that play on the boys football team anymore so yeah it just kind of all went from there so what what cl- what club did you play for as soon as that finished? What where did you go from there? Then what club did you sort of play for? So when I was fifteen, I got called up to the Northern Ireland Senior Women's Team, um, and I decided that it was time for me to move on, move clubs. And um, so I moved to Glen Torn at the age of sixteen, mm-hmm. and I played for Glen Torn right the whole way through. Um, I went to America whenever I was seventeen. And I stayed there for a short time and then I came back. Um, and then when I was 21, I took some time out and had some, some traveling and stuff. And But every time I come home, like Glen Torrens, always my team. Yeah. Um, and then up until recently, I signed for Rangers. Sure. So how did, was it due to your performances, obviously in the, the Irish League, that you managed to get a really good move to, to Rangers then? I think so. Um, I think with the international team as well, you know, making uh, such steps forward and obviously the league and stuff over here too. I think Rangers came and watched two of the cup finals that Glen Torn were in um, and we happened to win them both. And then I went over on a training week um, last November, maybe two Novembers ago. And just from there, then they offered me a contract and I moved in the January. Brilliant. So how many how many games have you played for obviously because it's been stop and start how, how many games have you actually managed to play for Rangers? So when I went over in January we went to start pre season the league played four games and then we all we all went on international break. Uh, when we went on international break everybody was sent home, um, and then we recommenced again I think maybe August. Um, we played a few games and then again international break happened and then unfortunately in the round red for my ACL so I think right now at the minute I've played maybe 10 competitive games okay so it's it's how's, like nothing but yeah how's the how's the rehab going for you yeah good I got my surgery in December so I'm three months uh post-surgery now um and everything seems to be going on as planned which is which is good it's what we want to hear um so i think the next stage for me now is getting back over to rangers soon and just picking up on my rehab and hopefully starting to run sure so the right the the scottish um premier league starts back in the start of april doesn't it yeah the fourth of april our first game back is hearts yeah so good chance it'll be good, good chance i think to win. good for the yeah, I think so. Um, I think all the guards have been back in training now from this week, which is good, and it gives them a few weeks to get back going to, you know, pick up on that little bit of fitness and be back in around the guards and get training. And then the first match, obviously, being back, I think everyone will just be excited to be playing games and to be in and around people and have a bit of normality back. No, definitely, yeah, totally. So who who do you support as a team? As a kid, I was supported. I did support Rangers when I was a kid, and obviously right through to now. Um, oh. But club wise, I, I do support. I'm a United fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay, so when we're talking internationally, it, it my heart. <laughs> so we're talking internationally. Uh, which 
which um, which was your first cap and where was your first cap? Do you remember? Yeah, my first cap, it seems so long ago now, I feel old. Mm -hmm. My first cap was away to Spain. Um, uh, we were beat 3 0 um, by Spain. And it was kind of just like this is your first game, you're starting, and just kind of go out and just, I'm the type of person I feel that I take everything in my stride. So a game of football is a game of football for me. And it was just a chance for me to go out and play with you know, more experienced players um, and just try and learn from them. No, definitely. So were you one of the youngest players when you were capped? Were you one of the youngest players in the squad? Yeah, I think um, one of my other teammates, she got called up at the same time. She was 16. Okay. Um, she played the phone, so it was actually a double header um, with Spain and England. So it wasn't easy as the first two games. Right. Um but, uh, yeah, no, I think me and both, me and her were, we were two 15, 16 year olds. Um, I think now, like, we have a lot of younger players coming through. So we've had players who have been younger than us again that, you know, have been played. And I think it just shows you that the standard of the kids coming through is, it's a step up again. So why, why, do, you, why do you think that is now then? There's more, more players. Is it because they've, they've had more opportunities than yourself? Or do you think there's a better structure in place? I think so, yeah. I think there's more of a focus now on, you know, grassroots and development of of all the girls now. And, you know, they do have a lot more support and um, there is a better structure, like you say, in place for them and more opportunities just as they're coming up through the age group. I think whenever we were younger, it was quite limited. Um, you know, like I say, like a lot of the girls, if you do talk to a lot of the girls, you might find that they did spend some time in boys football. Um and many people do that now because there is so many girls team and girls teams and coaches and you know they have they just have a lot more these days. So do you think playing with playing football with the boys, do you think that helped your your development? Because you said you played in the girls team and the boys team. Do you think that helped your development, maybe the physicality side of it? Yeah, definitely. I think um I think it makes you tougher for sure. I think when you're 11, 12 and there's boys telling you that, you know, you're not, you're not going to be starting ahead of me or you're not good enough to play football. Like you're 12, so you have no fear. Mm. So I think you just go out and, you know, you kind of just want to show boys that you can play football. Um, but definitely, I think, I think with the girls in and around the same kind of age as, as I am, you can kind of tell the difference with the ones who maybe played with boys and who didn't. Um, but yeah, it definitely makes you, you tougher for sure and um, brings you that wee bit more physical, have the physical side of the game. So talk, touching on that part, um, who, obviously when you were obviously being driven around Northern Ireland, I guess, to, to the matches, who, who's been your biggest sort of support um, in, your, in your career? I think... Um, it's obviously going to be my family. I think, um, you know, my parents have always been like, look, it's your choice. You can play football and um, you don't have to play football. Like I was never forced into doing something that, you know, I did or didn't want to do. Um, and it was my choice to, you know, be so dedicated to football. And I was lucky that they were there to, to take me to matches, to take me to training and I never missed. Um, but I think for me, that was the right approach for them because I would never want to feel forced to do something and I kind of just fell in love with football at such an early age that you know it was always what I was going to do and they were always there to support me. Oh, that's excellent, that's brilliant. Did they get, have they had the opportunity to, to come over and watch you play for Rangers yet or is that due to due to the restrictions? No they haven't, they hadn't, we had three games like I say before the first international break and mm. um, they were planning on obviously coming over after um, but that hasn't happened as yet, so hopefully soon. Something to look forward to then, brilliant. Okay, so um, who, which player did you, so when you were growing up and, and playing, which player, did you have a player that you looked up to and thought, oh, I'd love to be like them or inspired to be them? I don't know, like, I think whenever I was growing up, like, there was a lot, there was a lot of female footballers, um, and it obviously it's obviously grown since then. Um, 
but I think I just used to watch like a lot of the men's games um, and I was a massive obviously United and Rangers fans and I think when I was younger I just used to watch people in my position in my position um, I think I remember when I was younger like I always wanted to play like Ryan Giggs because he just used to run up and down the line and that's where I played when I was younger yeah. Um, but I never had like that one feel like I never had that one person that I kind of wanted to be like I always kind of just looked at people who were older and more experienced than me like the Northern Ireland squad and just watched how they would train and, and hope that you know whenever I'm there it's that I'm at the same level as them okay no, that's great um, so, so touching on that obviously Northern Ireland what's, what would you say is your, your biggest achievement as a player so far this one did you a qualifying for the playoffs. Um, you know, it's something that it's never done been done before. Like we've never got this far. Um, and every game in this group just meant so much to us, I think. And you know, if we were to qualify for a major tournament, it would be, you know, by far the biggest achievement in not only my career, but I can speak for everyone on the team and the staff, that that would be theirs as well. No, definitely. So who, touching on, we were touching on players and, and what players that you inspired to. What about um, what's the hard, who's the hardest opponent that you played so far? If you know their name, if it was an international player. Um, we've played. We always seem to get Holland in the group. We played Holland a few times, and we played Norway. Um, they're uh, they're tough ninety minutes, but I marked um, Van Sanden, who plays for um, Holland. And she's just fast. Like, there's just your kind of game plan goes out the window and you just concentrate on, I feel, one player. Um, but look, like all those countries, they just, they're filled with quality players. Um, and I think that, you know, all those teams that we come up against, like we're from Northern Ireland, we're always the underdog. And I think that whenever we play countries like that, you know, there's not just one player on the team that's that's good. They're, they're, all, they're all amazing, you know. No, no, I guess, you know, when you're playing a, a top-seeded team, you're always, it's always going to be a, a, a tough a tough ask. Um, so, team-wise, who's who's the hardest team hardest team that you've played against? You mentioned Holland. Was, was that the team that you would say? Yeah, I think um, Holland and Norway. Um, I remember when we were, we played France as well. Um, we played France away. We actually played France seven days apart twice. Um, that was that definitely was a week to, to kind of forget. Um, that was quite a few years ago. Um, but yeah, like France, I think Holland and Norway would be the top three, the the, the toughest teams. They just they just move so fast. They just know the next move before the ball comes, and they're just full of quality. I think that you know they play in all the top clubs across Europe, and they're just a step above. So do you think that obviously the the, be the benefit of them playing majority of their players are professional um, just gives them that, that edge every time they come together as a, a, a nation really yeah definitely I think um, you know we're, we're very small over here and I think that you know we forget that although we've got good grassroots and you know we're producing a lot of um, you know more improved girls like the generation of kids that's coming through is very very good I think that you know, for years and years and years, those countries have been doing that. And, you know, we're just, we're a few years behind. Like, if we're honest, we're, we're quite a few years behind. And, you know, it's going to take us a very long time to kind of reach, you know, the likes of England and the likes of Holland. And, you know, their, their grassroots have it started from a long time ago. And I think their structure has been right for a very long time as well. And it, it obviously just shows, you know, with the likes of, like, Holland and France, like, they don't move from the top spot. No, no, it's true. Yeah. No. Um, so what's the hardest part uh, been so far? Obviously, you've had, obviously, your, your injury, but um, during, the, during the COVID restrictions, what's the hardest thing for you? I think the... I think, you know, not being with the team. I think um, we've been lucky in the last, like, we've been lucky in the fact that the first lockdown, you know, everything shut down and then Elite Sports was allowed to open up. And I think, you know, we now don't take being part of a football team for granted anymore and being elite in your sport because um, we've been lucky enough to have that little bit of real life. Um, 
But I think just the daily routine, you know, like of being in and around people, like I'm not really someone that likes to spend a lot of time by, by you know, myself. And I think that even though we are lucky enough to get a bit of elite sport back, you just want more. You just want all of all of real life, you know, like we've got football back, but we, now we just want fans. Um. So yeah, but you know we're we're in the we're now in the, a year in the lockdown now, and I think it, the thought of real life was starting to scare some people because I don't think people can remember what it was like. No, no, definitely. And you t- you touched on you touched on fans and supporters. Do you think do you think the will it benefit yourselves in in the playoffs having supporters um, not there than than if they were there uh, because obviously going to Ukraine probably is a difficult you know, difficult place away. Um, probably would have had a bit of a partisan crowd where obviously at home it's a 50-50, I guess, isn't it? But what's what do you what, what are your thoughts on that? I think with our team, we can play with fans or without fans. Because I think for a long time, like if we're honest, we don't get thousands of, of fans in our games. And that's just something that you know, was was almost normal for us. I think in this campaign, we started to get a lot more fans because the results were better. And, you know, like the exposure of women's football like in Northern Ireland has gone up another level again. Um, and now, you know, we're starting to get noticed for, for like I said, our results. Um, but look, like we'll come home and we'll, we'll play Ukraine as if, you know, the fans were there. There's always something about coming to Northern Ireland to play. It's quite scary for anyone, I think. Um, but yeah, like I don't know that fans will make an awful lot of a difference um, just right now. But obviously, we would love to, you know, have them there. We would love to have a packed Sea View, which is where we play our home games. Um, if we were to qualify, you know. No, no, definitely. So over over the two over the two legs, you got you girls a a confidence that, that you can you can beat beat Ukraine. Okay, yeah, like we you know we have to we have to be confident. Um, we have a few players that are injured at the minute, but look, we're we know that we're like I said earlier, like we're very much the underdog. You know, we're aware that Ukraine are like twenty odd places above us in the rankings. Um, but you know, we've defied the odds to get this far, and you know, we're just doing all we can to prepare in the right places and just to be there and and turn up and just give it our all. Like we've never been in this position before, so. You know, I think we're all very aware that, you know, we need to, we'll give everything we've got to, to get further again. Mm-hmm. But I know that we're in our quality side as well, so we can't take that away from them. Mm. Do you know much about Ukraine? I know you played, I know you played them a few years ago, but do you know much, do you know much about them? Have you seen much, much of them? Yeah, like, like anything, like, we'll, like I said, we'll prepare, um, we'll watch them. Um, we'll watch, you know, we'll watch us again. We played Ukraine last year in the Pinatar Cup. Um, but, you know, Ukraine will be a very different side than they were last year. Um, I know that both our teams made quite a lot of subs because it was a friendly. Um, and, you know, we're a very different team than we were last year as well. Um, and because we're now a year a year on into our, like our new staff and stuff. So, um, but yeah, like, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to prepare and, um, We'll just go out and give it give it our all. I know I'm I'm talking like I'm I'm playing, but you know I'll probably lose my voice on the sideline. But yeah, will you be tra- will you be travelling to Ukraine or you won't be or won't you be allowed? No, I don't think so. I think just with the the restrictions and stuff in place, but yeah. I won't miss that one. I'll be watching for sure. So in in Northern Ireland, is it going to be is it going to be live or is it on Sky or? Yeah, it's all it's on BBC. It's um, both games, so where Ukraine and home are being broadcasted by BBC, I think, for the first time as well, which is great. Um, so so that'll be good as well, so everyone can tune in. No, that's really good, and I think that, that, that helps the profile of the sport as well, doesn't it? If, if it's accessible to people without having to pay, you know, a subscription to, to watch it, then you yeah. know, you'll get more you'll get more viewers and more more girls thinking. Oh, I'd love to pull on a green shirt and you know represent my country, even if they are already playing, you know, um, in in the sport. So no, that's brilliant. Um, so who who's the most influential player in your in your squad? Or who's a player that you think people who have never watched Northern Ireland before against Ukraine? Who, who's the player that uh, you think might 
make the potential the, the, the difference the winning and losing I think um, we've got a few to be honest we do have a you know we've got a few of those players we've got a group of um, five or six I'm not going to include myself in this because I feel like I'm still quite young you know I'm like on the, the lower end of 30 um, but we've got a few experienced players but you know, we've got Rachel Furness in the middle who will put her head on absolutely anything if it meant winning a header or going over the line. Um, uh, I think our last game against the Furrow Islands, she actually flipped over. She flipped over the barrier after scoring because she couldn't stop herself. Um, but yeah, like you know, for me, she's yeah, she's our she's our our girl. She's our go-to girl. Um, and I think it shows that like, how many caps and stuff she has. She just gives everything from Northern Ireland. Um, but I think obviously at the back as well, you know, like we have two very, very experienced centre backs um, who, you know, I think they're both over 100 caps as well. Um, so like our spine of our team is, is very strong and experienced. And, you know, I think every time everybody puts a green shirt on, they'll, they'll literally give anything to win. Yeah, so... How big do you think? Obviously, you say it's first, obviously for the first time that you've qualified for the Euros. How big do you think it will have an input influence on, you know, the future future of uh, you know women's football in in Northern Ireland if if you if you qualify? I can't. I don't even know. It would just make a massive difference. I just think. Um, female football in Northern Ireland I think girls, kids I just think it, the whole face of female football would change in Northern Ireland if we were to qualify for the Euros I just think for so many years you know people just kind of thought that we were playing just to play and you know these last 18 months um, with having the new staff in you know they put the, the belief in us that we could play football and it's you know it showed like it's our first campaign and, and we're in a playoff position and I think that's even going to change the face of football over here too, because you know now that's now that's our benchmark. You know now that's where we want to get to every campaign, um, and obviously, obviously to qualify. But you know it'll just try, it'll just you know strive everybody on again, and I think it'll inspire a lot of young kids to realise that I can actually play for Northern Ireland. No, no, definitely, and I think you know I think. Probably that when it, the men's the men's team won in eighty two and, and and qualified sorry in eighty two and eighty six I think there probably was a big big influx of of supporters as well not just players wanting to you know support the team and, and be involved in I guess, I guess a, a good feel factor isn't it um, as a yeah. as a player and a supporter you got something to look forward to you know you've got something in the future especially the current climate you've got something to look forward to so if you win against Ukraine. You've got something to look forward to a few months down the line to um you know to potentially be playing or be involved in um and you know playing against the best the best teams in in Europe. So I think yeah, it it can only be it can only be a good thing um you know with that. Um so touching on your the management side. So we've not really meant spoken about management side. You've you've obviously had three or four different managers you know in your in your sort of um your career who who who's who's maybe the the one that's influenced you the most or 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 currently or in the past i think um yeah i've had quite a few managers i think i had a the same international manager for a very long time but um for me I, he's i've only been coached by kenny shields for like this whole campaign and um i think for me like personally He's took my game to another level. Um, not only him, but the rest of the rest of the staff. I think um, Dean's his son, and you know we've got um, Gary Boyd, who's also an assistant as well. And I think you know everyone together collectively has just, for me, like they've just done you know quite a lot um, with my game. And I think it speaks for the results too that you know all the girls would feel the same. I think. They basically, you know, they changed the mentality that we had and, you know, we now have mentality that we can win games um, and they just give us the belief that we didn't quite have in the past. No, that's excellent to hear. And obviously the next the next level up, isn't it? You know, so thinking that you can play, you know, you can play or just be part of, you know, that collective, but then be the next, the next level up is to, 
we can actually beat these teams. We can qualify for the, the Euros. We've got a chance of, you know, when is the, when is the, the World Cup? Has the World Cup draw been or are you still waiting on the World Cup draw once the Euros are over? Or? Yeah, so it's after the playoffs. So we'll get the World Cup draws after the playoffs. So, you know, that's exciting for us. I think um, the World Cup's in Australia and New Zealand um, right. as well. You know, now we are kind of excited for for the draw to come out because, you know, we, like I said, like our whole mentality's changed and, you know, now we believe that we can win games and, you know, like you said, it's just, again, it's something to look forward to um, and it's just, there's just a lot of uh, positive, like, feelings around the camp and um, it's just, it's been a very different 18 months than what we've been used to. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. And I think you can only, like you say, you can only take the positives and, you know, look forward yeah. to look forward to the future, and like I say, hopefully, you know, at the start at the start of April, the team will the team will get over the line. You'll qualify for the Euros, and then you'll have obviously the Euro to look forward to, the draw for uh, the World Cup in in Australia and New Zealand, which will be a, an amazing experience yeah. if you qualify for that as well. So I think you know all the all the you know, signs seem to be you know positive signs. So that's really good. So. Really appreciate the t- your time, Demi. Um, this will be um, put on our YouTube channel on um, Wednesday, the the thirty first of March, so people can can either listen to it or watch it on on the thirty first of March uh, on the Sports Coffee uh, channel. So, guys, thank you very much for listening and and watching. Um, Demi, good luck for the with your rehab and and obviously fingers crossed for the girls. For the for the playoffs and all the best for the rest of the season and hopefully um, we'll see we'll see you soon. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem.